Have you ever wanted to just push and pull shapes really quickly in Fusion? Let's do that. So in Fusion, you have the ability to create what's called a primitive. And this can feel like Tinkercad push and pulling shapes. So this is the fastest, simplest way to work in Fusion. Effectively drag out the area or a rectangle. So you click somewhere to get started, and then it's offering some dimensions. You drag the rough shape of what you want and click, and now it's going to give you these handles. These handles let you provide depth. They let you stretch in every direction, except <laughs> it doesn't let you do both directions from the starting sketch, if you want to think of it that way. So it only goes one direction for depth, but as far as these other two directions or vectors, you can drag as much as you like. Over in the dialog, it's giving you the option of adding a new body, a new component, or even using this as a cutting tool. So we hit OK, and now what we have down in the timeline is this box primitive. So you right click on it, and you can edit it. It's basically dragging and dropping, or you can type in values and hit OK, it updates. So you obviously don't have the same freedom as when you sketch, but it is simpler. Right, so now I'd like to introduce a circle. It's now asking, do you wanna create a cylinder that is a cutter or is a solid, right? So totally up to you. You get to drag the overall diameter and then you get to drag the depth. When we hit okay, I can come back and right click and do edit feature. And so I can adjust this depth here and we could adjust the diameter with this placement here or in the dialog. Let's take a quick look at these other types, box, cylinder, sphere. So what it's gonna ask for is just basically, <laughs> where do you want it to go and what's its diameter? That's really it, super simple, super fast. And the torus, if we wanna basically create what I would call a donut to maybe go around this thing, we can set its diameter and it's its center, center line of the diameter, and then you can drag out overall. But you can reposition. So I could set kind of where that sketch line sits. Did you want that to be the inside or outside of your donut? How do you want it to solve, right? So it's putting the geometry on the outside of the sketch line in this case. Let's say you want to make a frame. You sketch your rectangle, and now what I want to do is I'll come up and I'll choose pipe in the primitives. And this allows me to place this pipe geometry right on that sketch. So this can be a really nice way to do tubing. And this deserves its own video. I'll get into the details of how you work with pipe and tubing, as well as some advanced additional utilities you can look at in Fusion. But for now, we're basically covering what cross section would you like for the pipe and then what values for the size of the pipe you're using. All right, so what if you wanna create a coil spring? Let's come into the coil tool, and first it has me sketch a circle on a plane. So it has me drag a circle. I'm gonna put in the value of that diameter and hit enter, and now it's gonna prompt me with, here's your diameter, how many revolutions? So if I try for a fourth revolution, and it lets you adjust rotation, it lets you adjust how you solve it. So for example, this is the how many revolutions and what's the total height. And then we can switch to pitch where instead it's kind of expressing it as how many revolutions and then what's that spacing or pitch between those revolutions. So the pitch, if you were to measure from the center of this coil to this coil, that's that distance for the pitch. And then we can even come in and adjust the angle at which this starts or how it kind of fans out. So we can set that, let's try making it a little bit smaller. If you go too large, it stops solving. So I did negative 15 and it gets smaller by this degree. And then we can kind of play with these different sections and different shapes that are being solved for this coil. One more to talk about with the coil is a spiral, and this is effectively a flat or two-dimensional. It's still as if you were 
taking this cross section data and creating a coil, it's just not solving in the X, Y, Z, but rather on this one plane and fanning out, right? So if we add revolutions or increase the diameter, it's all going to happen on this one flat plane. While we're here, one extra bonus thing I wanna mention, we talk, talked about coils, coil springs, and you can see that you can use the coil to make a thread, a custom thread. So you absolutely can do this. So if I have a solid, I can come in and do the coil, but I wanna show you an even faster way to do this, just so you're aware. We'll come back to this in a minute, but I wanna show you on the coil. So I'm gonna do, do the revolution in height, and we'll flip the direction. So you can see this is coming down and acting as a cutter. So we're cutting a custom thread. If we spend time dialing in the diameter and the pitch or however we'd like to define it, we have now this custom thread, very cool. But in Fusion, you have an even faster way to do this, which is for standard threads. So if you come here and hit extrude, search for thread or Come over and find thread under the create menu, click it, and this lets you work on female, so internal or external threads, either one. Select the face, and the first option below the face you select is, do you want it modeled? If you click this, it's going to actually cut those threads on that solid, and you can play with the menus here and adjust it. Click OK, and you now have that thread incredibly fast, easy to edit, and this is great, again, for standard threads. If you want a custom thread like we just did, did, use that coil option. So that's an introduction to primitives. Play with those. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you tomorrow.